Today I'm trying out the Jackery Solar Generator 2000 Plus and by plus I mean you get solar panels and a backup battery as well. I'm actually kind of excited about this one. Those of you who have watched the channel before will have seen numerous battery tests. I'm going to throw everything at this one because looking at the stats it's the biggest and best yet. First of course, what's in the box? small box actually has the backup battery in it and there's something I want to point out this flap was hanging down when I took it out of the box and this is becoming a common feature with Chinese manufactured batteries is that they have loose flaps can you tighten your flaps please around the back we've got obviously our inlet and outlet for our cables and you've also got DC inputs for charging so that you can run these separately off a solar panel and you don't need to have them connected to your solar generator to actually recharge them which is good some other brands don't offer that flexibility around the front and it is heavy there's a lot of battery in this box around the front we've got an lcd display obviously that's going to tell you how much battery juice is left and you've got an on off button that should be self-explanatory Oh, now look at this. The packaging and presentation of these little batteries is probably the best I have seen yet. And yeah, look, there's the cables. You're not going to lose them. They're nice bright orange. And it doesn't look like you need too many adapters or bits of stuff to make this whole system work. I love that. That's really good. I'm not going to lose those cables. Oh, instructions. So there you go, I got my little shaving kit and my carry-on. Oh hey, do you guys know where gate 12 is? I can't find gate 12. No? Hmm. I can't overemphasize the importance of good design when you're connecting solar panels with a solar generator. A lot of the other brands on the market seem to pull bits and pieces out of the parts bin. This has been shipped ready to plug and go and that's it. A couple of bits of Velcro and one zip and you're in business. The front panel of the Jackery doesn't just have a digital display that tells you about the health and the status of the machine, it also has all of your power outputs. So we're in Australia, we use 240 volt 10 amp power, so we've got three of those with their own separate power button so you can isolate them if you need to. Over on the right hand side we've got two USB-A and two USB-C ports, again with their own power isolator, and then under this little flappy panel we've got a 12 volt DC jack that will be good for running car fridges and the like. And once again, being flappy panels, they kind of fit. Around the back, we've got two of these flappy panels. One of them's already in use, of course, because we've got our solar panels plugged in. You can get another set of solar panels if you want to supercharge your recharge time. You've also got a 240 volt mains input, it's just a kettle plug. And if something goes wrong, there's your reset button. Keeping the theme of awkward flappy panels going, here's our expansion port. So there's only one expansion port on the base station because this is where the chain of backup batteries can be plugged into. Each of the backup batteries has two of these. Of course, the solar generator only needs one because this is the one receiving all of the current from the others. Setting them up to charge was refreshingly easy. I didn't have to press a single button. All I had to do was plug in the cable that has connections that will only allow you to plug it in the right spot. There's design for you again. Now we're back to using the solar panels in the field. And I think even though they took three or four hours to only charge this one 10%, they still have a purpose if you're out camping. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put something precious into a car fridge 
turn the car fridge on. Now that's got to cool down from ambient temperature. She's already started up there. And we can see that there's a bit of an output draw. At the moment, there's no input coming from the solar panels because it's 100% charged. We're going to leave this now for an hour or so. And this little machine and the app will tell us how many hours of continuous running we should have left with the little car fridge. At the moment, we're looking at 99.8 hours of continuous run time. Now, this wouldn't be a farm learning review if we didn't do something stupid. We're going to do a few things that are stupid. The first is I'm going to check out just how well all the protections on this power station work. I'm going to plug in my laptop to charge it. There we go, we've got some draw. And interestingly enough, it's got a more draw than the car fridge, very interestingly. And I'm gonna plug in old Sparky. Now this is the most powerful, old fashioned, brushed power tool I own. And what I'm gonna do is while I'm charging up the laptop, I'm gonna cut up some firewood with old Sparky here. But we have to be safe. And I've removed most of the nails from the timber. Well, there you go. The mere fact that you're watching this video means the laptop didn't explode because that's what I edit the videos on. Right, next test. Now we've got exactly the same saw, which has a 1750 watt rating mounted into a saw bench so I can keep it on without my hands on it. And at the same time, I'm gonna be using an angle grinder with a 780 watt rating. And we'll see if we can blow this little thing. Plug him in. Ha <laughs> Okay, now this trial is something that a lot of my viewers are really, really interested in when they're off grid. Can you actually weld from a battery? So what I'm gonna try and do is not just light up a spark, I'm gonna try and run a consistent bead with the Weld Class Weld Force 175 MST. Now I'm gonna be using this as a gasless MIG welder, which is an ideal solution for all welding on the farm. So let's see if our little Jackery Explorer 2000 Plus, see I got the brand in, is up to the task of using a welder. None of the other batteries I've reviewed so far have been able to compete with the welder under full load conditions. Well, I was able to not only run a bead, but I also blew a hole in the thin steel that I was doing it on. So yes, this is up to it. Let's run another bead now. I can hear the fans have kicked in. Let's try and push it a little bit harder. Can this support gasless MIG welding? Yes. Finally, a solution for people off grid. Although I wouldn't do it too often with a battery because no matter how big the battery, you're gonna be pulling a pretty heavy load with a large welder like this. That's not just a thumbs up from me, that's a wow. So summing it up, would I get one? Absolutely. I mean, it's by far and away the most powerful battery that I've tried on this channel, but it's also the best designed. Even things like the app just seamlessly integrate with the battery. All you have to remember is to press these two buttons at the same time and your app connects and you're on your way. Like the battery, the app doesn't have any of the frivolous features that you don't need that make it confusing to use. And you can get underway without reading the instructions with one of these batteries in a matter of minutes. It'll support a little car fridge for days at a time. 
And even though the solar panel was slightly overpowered, you can buy more of them and add them up. And not only that, the solar panel will support the normal base load of a car fridge, meaning that this will give you weeks of potential camping opportunity without having to recharge. When I did plug it into the wall, it took an hour and one minute to charge. So did the backup battery. And despite the fact that it supported power tools that were overrated for its sockets for extended periods of time, heck, it even let me weld with it. The most important thing of all about this battery was it kept my beverage cool. Cheers, Jackery. Guys, if you want to support the channel and you're interested in one of these batteries, there's a link in the description. If you like this kind of video, don't forget, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more on timthompson.ag and I'll see you next time, hopefully with something as good as this.